that's why, as an MP, I always believed my job was to stand up for my constituents, even if it meant clashing with my own party. I criticized government when it made decisions that were bad for my riding and my province. It didn't matter to me whether the government was conservative or liberal. And that's what I want our conservative MLAs to do. Their first responsibility will be to their writings. As a leader, as the leader, I will never punish an MLA for disagreeing with a party position in a respectful and responsible manner. Never punish an MLA for speaking up for his constituents. I endorse that. We will, yes, we will balance the budget and get Crown Corporations under control. I can promise you that no CEO of BC Ferries will be making a, a million dollars a year. Yeah. I've spent the last month traveling around the province listening to people. From Port Hardy to Victoria, from Smithers to Penticton, from Campbell River to Camloops. Everywhere I go, I hear about the price of gas and how it makes everything more expensive. When gas prices are high, we pay more for food, clothing, furniture, and in fact, pretty much everything we buy. The biggest component of gas prices is taxes. And in BC, we have a special tax, a tax no one else in North America has, a carbon tax. <laughs> On July 1st, the carbon tax will go up again. We will all pay more at the pump than we do right now. We were told that it would be revenue neutral. We were told, yeah, we were told that it would cut carbon emissions in BC. Nothing could be further from the truth. The government's own budget documents show that the amount of carbon emitted in BC has increased since the carbon tax was put in place and will keep increasing for at least four more years. So we pay more at the pump, the price of groceries rises, there's more carbon in the air, and the government rakes in more money. Money that is used to send out vote for Christie checks or pay for the carbon bureaucracy. Now what makes us whole carbon tax even crazier, they make every school and hospital pay for it when they heat their buildings. Every school and hospital in the province must send money to a crown corporation called the Pacific Carbon Trust. This year it adds up to $25 million. That's $25 million less for patients and students. The government sends hospitals and schools money to operate and then by law compels them to send $25 million back. Oh. A couple of weeks ago, the Vancouver School Board laid off about 180 teachers. How many good teachers were let go because the school board had been forced to cut, to, to cut carbon tax checks to the Pacific Carbon Trust? Okay. Christy Clark is committed to the carbon tax. She had even issued a flyer during the recent by-election in Point Grey reaffirming how much she believed this unfair, expensive tax was good and necessary. Well, I'm pleased to announce today that a new BC Conservative government will scrap the carbon tax. because shipping costs will drop. For the millions of British Columbians who live outside the urban areas where public transit is not an option, who disproportionately pay this on for tax, they will find relief. Yeah. <laughs> we won't just stop there. We won't just scrap the carbon tax. 
we will abolish the whole carbon bureaucracy that goes with it. Yeah. No more specific carbon trust, no more complicated trading schemes that see British Columbians pay 500 times the international price for carbon. We will build an education system that puts children and parents first, not the teachers union. Parents must have a greater say in the education of their children. The health care system cannot simply be fixed by throwing more money at it. We will be smarter at how we spend precious resources and cut back on the waste that comes with any large bureaucracy. We will take the position in any treaty negotiations that all British Columbians are equal. be deprived of voting for their local government based on their ethnic origin and that private property should not be expropriated. Yeah. We will invest in police and crown prosecutors to make sure that our communities are safe, to ensure that our courts are efficient and victims get justice. Justice delayed is justice denied and the status quo isn't just good enough anymore. We are building a new choice, a new option for those common sense British Columbians who are tired of false choice between the Tweedledee NDP and the Tweedledum Liberals. <laughs> Alternative together. I cannot do it alone. I need your help. I want to tell, challenge you to do something this week. Go out and tell someone you know, it could be a friend, a family member, a colleague at work or neighbor, about what you saw here today. Tell them we are building a new choice. Tell them we will listen to the people. Tell them we will respect their values and priorities. Tell them why they need to join the new BC Conservatives. <laughs> this week, get one more person to join our party. More if you can, but even if you get one, that's a victory. That's how we're going to build this party, one person at a time. We built in an organization in 50 constituencies in this province now, and we need all 85. We will be ready for the next election whenever Christy Clark decides to call it, and we will run a BC Conservative candidate in every riding in this province. Every British Columbian deserves a choice in the next provincial election. A choice for families and seniors, a choice for free enterprise, a choice for honest government. Mark my words, we will elect MLAs and we cannot do it without you. I spent 18 years in Ottawa fighting for common sense and the people of BC. I have chosen to fight for a better government for British Columbia. I have chosen to get in my truck and drive around this province to hear your concerns, to give voice to all those people who have been ignored by the old line parties. I am more excited to leave the BC, lead the BC Conservatives than I have been about anything else I've ever done in politics. And join us, help us build a new choice for British Columbia, Help us return common sense to the leg legislature. Help us form BC's next government. Thank you. There's one more person we'd like to recognize today. If you can all be seated for one more minute. Politicians are recognized in a number of ways. We cheer for them at the end of speeches, we shake their hands at special events, and we read about them in the media. But there's somebody else who's just as important as the politician. This person makes the same family sacrifices, they feel just as nervous before that big speech, and they are as elated and as hurt by comments that are made in the media. 
For John, that person is Sue Cummins. Thank you.